Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me tmaso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Reach out to me directly for pricing. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing one of a trilogy of Honey Gold Special Edition watches launched in 2010. This is the Alango Unzona 1815 Moon Phase Omaja F.A. Langa 165 years. This is a limited edition of 265 pieces, and it was part of a series of three, along with the Langa 1 Tourbillon and a Torbograph, all of them limited with solid gold dials and honey gold cases. This watch is the most wearable of the three. 37.4 millimeters in diameter, it measures 9.4 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip, 45 millimeters, with a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist. You can see it's a wrist of 16 centimeters circumference, and this watch wears beautifully. I would recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. This is a watch for him. It's a watch for her. It'll easily slide underneath a dress cuff, and you can see from over the top that the lugs come nowhere near my wrist on either side. The strap is light brown with large rectangular scale alligator leather, a little bit of bolstering, give it volume down the center, a monotone stitch, and a folded edge. On the bottom, calf skin, no crimping, no gouging. This is a Lunga factory strap in brand new condition. The buckle is also honey gold, an 18 karat gold alloy that mixes yellow gold and rose gold. It has a very pale look, almost like vintage 7.9 or 14 karat gold. The watch buckle has one feature that's universal to Langa pin buckles, which is an elevated bridge so that the strap fits inside the buckle and stays flat when it's on your wrist instead of stacking up underneath. But these honey gold buckles are a little bit different. They don't have the retaining bar typically found in Langa pin buckles. And as far as I've observed, that is a distinctive feature of the honey gold pin buckles alone. Honey gold, once again, not just an alloy of yellow and rose, but also harder than conventional 18 karat. While it's still 18 karat, it's more resilient against scratches, scuffs, and dents. The mid case is satinated, bezel and case back are polished for contrast. There are a lot of fingerprints here, and I apologize for that. The watch is in very good condition. You can see that the lugs are stepped out with a notch between lug profile and case. This is characteristic of Langa. We have a pusher adjuster for the moon phase. Also characteristic of Langa, the moon phase has an adjustment interval of once every 122 years, and the moon phase disc is made of solid gold. 122 is the standard for a perpetual calendar. It's uncommon to find a watch that only has a moon phase that uses that long duration moon phase design. Now the dial, although it's silvered white, is a solid disc of gold. So the dial, as well as the moon phase disc, and the case itself, all made of solid gold. The dial center, cut with a rose lathe to create that rosette pattern. So you have a solid gold, engine-turned dial, and then it's an 1815 because it has Arabic numerals, with a railroad track outboard against which to read your minutes. The hands, including alpha hands at center, have been fired blue. When you rotate the watch, you could see that the case back features unconventional decoration. First, let's talk about the basics of the movement. It is the L9432. So manual wind, 45 hour power reserve, three hertz beat rate, pivots on 26 joules. It does feature that 122 year moon phase and a stop seconds function. If you look carefully, you can see it also has a very special feature, which is an overcoil hairspring, generally only equipped on the highest complications and the most special watches made by Langa. It allows the watch to keep excellent time in every position on your wrist or your dresser relative to gravity. All this is 30 meters water resistant, but that's almost irrelevant given the intent of the watch. Taking a look, you can see that the bridges and plates are made of German silver, the nickel copper zinc alloy with the copper giving them that golden hue. But if you look at the balance cock, you could see it's a different color. It is actually made of honey gold, just like the case. So it is a freehand engraved and mirror anglage beveled work of art in its own right. At center, you can see a fired blue screw anchoring it to the base plate. The swan's neck regulator in steel has been beveled on its side and black polished on its top. And you can see here we have both black polished screws 
and fired blued screws. You can also see that the engraving on the three-quarter plate, and by the way, it's a pocket watch style three-quarter plate, but that engraving has been done manually without the advantage of a lathe, a laser, or a drill bit. And the engraving here is all done manually. You can also see there's a sort of damaskining that runs around the outer face of the three-quarter bridge. And then at center, we have a sunray stripe system. So sunray Cote de Genève, but we're not in Switzerland, so we'll just call them sunray stripes. We have golden chaton cup holding the pivot jewels because back in the pocket watch era when F.A. Longo was still active, oftentimes you couldn't press a jewel directly into a bridge or a plate. The equipment wasn't precise enough, so a small precision golden cup was created. The jewel was pressed into that, and then that would be held in the bridge or the plates using screws. So these chatons, although they do add a little bit more shock resistance in a modern watch, they're mostly here for ornamental purposes. There's gorgeous engine turning in two sizes on the base plate. The wheels have been satinated. And then you can see the edge of the bridges have been mirror beveled, and beautifully so. This is a very special watch. If you love this watch, reach out to me, tmaso at thewatchbox.com, for purchase and pricing details.